Good evening, everyone. How are we? So today we're back on the hair block for Jed Henry's new, <coughs> excuse me, new avatar design. Um, I've just about finished up the previous carving work on the um, on the third Patreon print, so I'll be printing that in the next few days. Uh, I'll be running that batch out. So all that's left to do is a bit of clearing out work with the hammer. So it's not it's not hugely um, friendly towards streaming me hammering away on on a block for an hour. So I thought we'd get back on with this. Um, in other news, the I'm sure you guys on Patreon and who have come from Instagram and stuff have already seen the Facebook group that I'd spoken about previously is now live. Um, the link I've I've posted a link in the Patreon on the Patreon page, and there is a new link on my bio in my link tree that will take you there um, it's a private group so um, you have to request to join but it's basically there for people to share share their work share uh, information they have about the process tools materials different things that they're doing it's not it's not only for people doing traditional work we can have discussions and share images about just about any type of prints, lino, woodblock, western woodblock style prints, anything like that. Um, share share information about the history of prints, stuff like that. So um, you should all go join if you have a Facebook profile. If not, then you should set one up and join join the community. We've already had quite a few members join, a few people join. And uh, yeah, I'll be posting regularly on there, um, updates about the stream, things like that, uh, little resource links and stuff that I've got, I'll be posting in there, <coughs> stuff like that. I've been in uh, aggressive clearing out mode. And hacking out colour blocks the last few days so it's it's a bit of a change of pace coming back to um, nice fine lines like this so I'm going to have to ease back into it slowly but I hope everyone had a, had a good weekend nice and restful I hope everyone's week's Doing well. Hey Nigel, how are you? Hey George. <coughs> and also uh, with the Facebook group as well, hopefully the, the plan is that it becomes 
a rather large community and it becomes quite quite hard to to handle all on my own that's the that's the goal so if anyone feels like they would like to moderate or uh, be like a, a guest admin or or something like that then then let me know hi John good evening good afternoon Oh, that's good news, George. How's um, how's it going? How's the recovery? Of course, Nigel, ask away. Hi, Ben. Sorry, I'm sorry I missed you in there, Ben. Great, George. Well, I'll um, I'll add you as a, I'll find you and add you as a friend from um, from my personal page, and then and then we can we can get that sorted. Uh, I haven't changed my clocks. When is the clock change? Let me find that out. Um, okay, I think it might be this. Sunday, yes, yeah, this Sunday I'll change. So I'll, I'll make a note. I'll make a note of that, and um, <coughs> excuse me, I'll make sure to post that to the uh, the Patreon and, and Instagram. I'll, I'll make sure to change the um, schedule times. Gradual's good, George. You don't want to rush recovery, especially with something like that. Especially with. Uh, Tricky joints like shoulders and knees and things. Gradual recovery is always best, isn't it? Um, Nigel, so when I make a uh, when I make a, a batch of size, so I always work by the liter, and I always end up with so base. Essentially, for for me, um, m one liter of size will generally do my test prints one or two rounds of test prints depending on the size of the print and then the full batch of around 50 <coughs> um, and generally I will use that in a, in a week I've never I've never left it longer than a week um, so I can't with absolute certainty tell you that it, it would keep longer than that um, and generally you're going to be you're going to be using that in a shorter period of time it's best to make um, your sizing mixtures reasonably regularly so if you if you have a long stretch of printing in front of you and you're doing multiple batches then it's probably best to um, to make enough size to account for that entire batch and when you want to change your proportions it's just a case of, of cooking up a fresh a fresh batch of size I hope that helps I should um, <clears throat> I should really make a post or something about that but yeah generally generally if it's um, if I'm doing sort of two two test rounds of um, two test batches of prints and then going into a, a full production it's generally 
the size the excess size will be left in in the bottle for around a, a week and i i just keep a um an old uh an old juice bottle an old like ribena bottle or something like that to hand a, a one or two liter one and and just keep the size in there <clears throat> and then just keep it in a um it doesn't want to be in a in a really warm room because the the size can sort of because it goes like gelatin once it's um once it's sort of cooled down so you want it to stay in that sort of gelatin jelly type state and not to um melt and and turn back into a liquid So I hope that helps. Sorry, I don't. I don't have a lot of experience with leaving it for, for too long. It maybe would be interesting to, um, to test one day and to see how long it, it would actually last for. But things like this, discussions like this, and and running these tests and stuff would be great, great things for the uh, for the Facebook group and and stuff like that. It's sort of always been a um, sorry to keep talking about. It, I'm quite excited about it. But it's uh, sort of always been a a dream of mine since I first read about the the old um, the old groups that the Sasaku hanger artists and stuff would set up and. Uh, sort of all share their information and meet together and things like that. I've always sort of wanted a, to be part of a group of, of people that were all enthusiastic about prints and, and wanted to share their findings and process and, and things like that. For example, I've been having a, a some, a some pigments that you would use traditionally for Japanese woodblock prints that you can't get in the UK. And one of those is, is a yellow. And I've been having quite a bit of trouble with, uh, with the particular yellows that I have here. Um, there tends to be, quite often, a... Um, and it doesn't happen with any other pigment tends to be a small amount of bleed that that tends to come from these particular yellow pigments and I'd spoken to Dave about it and he suggested maybe it was my um, my preparation of the pigments and perhaps I was um, not dissolving the pigments in, in a correct way in alcohol and, and things like that um, so I tested that with a, with a number of different types of yellow pigments and, and kept getting the same outcome. So I'm now trying to track down and source a yellow pigment that is one, not horrendously toxic because many yellow pigments are, and two is uh, color fast. That's another issue with yellow pigments is them being made from plant matter and, and not being very color fast. Yeah, that's that's the idea. Is just sort of just test test something until until you uh, you get the desired outcome.
um, with key blocks, I find. So if I'm if I'm for example um, doing the color separations uh, and things like that as I as I was the other day, then um, I find to it's better to just use the sumi as is. Um, it's a bit stickier and you also want a, a sort of a darker impression so that it stays on so that you can see clearer through the through the paper and stuff but when you're printing a, a production batch of, of key blocks you want just a very little bit of paste not not as much as you would do obviously for a um, for a, a sky or a flat color or anything like that um, because it can it can then bleed you want um, you want your sort to be sort of tacky sort of a, a little bit sticky um, so just a touch of paste just to help the um, help the sumi move around a little bit I find uh, works really well Yeah, I have look, I have got a few cadmium. I got a few cadmium oranges and things like that. And I know I've spoken to people, printmakers in Japan, that still use safflower and gambo uh, gamboge, which is I think orpiment or something like that. And I'm not opposed to using a toxic pigment. It's just something like that especially something like an orpiment or something, if you're not paying 100% attention and you get a little bit on your hands and then touch your face or touch your mouth or something like that, it's, yeah, the danger's there. And as everyone will know, when you're in the, in the throes of working and you're sort of focused and sort of going fast against the clock, you're not, a hundred percent thinking about um, thinking about where, where your hands are going in regards to your face but thanks I'll uh, I'll um, I'll inquire I always think when I'm carving blocks like this that uh, any real carvers, if they were to be watching me, would have a heart attack. Watching me trying to carve all this. excited to get this print uh, this print done we've been me and Jed have been talking about doing this print for months and uh, it was well it was started months ago and then other things get in the way with the small prints to do and they need to be traced and carved and and printed and then patreon prints and stuff come up and Things end up taking a slight back seat, but after this week and finishing, I've got one round of um, reprints to do for Jed. I've got the Patreon prints to do, and then it's back 
back into this again. Yeah, my uh, yeah, Nigel, my my um, partner, Lucy, she paints um, illuminated manuscripts, and she has a uh, the the traditional yellow that they used is uh, is orpiment, and she has a small amount of it. And as I understand, she'll probably she'll be horrified at my my lack of knowledge, but um, from what I understand, it has to be kept sort of semi-submerged in uh, in water and then it's of less risk to you while, while it's not being used that the raw material I think and then um, obviously you prepare it she wears gloves and stuff she works with a lot of um, sort of dangerous pigments and things like that Yeah, I've been using I've been using an Indian yellow, um, a Naples yellow, another type of uh, in, a lot of uh, things like that are synthetic now. But I, I did try a traditional Indian yellow, which is made with uh, urine from a cow, of all things, um, and it all sort of had the same effect and it's, it's really odd to me because there's not a single other pigment that I use that, that does anything like that. And it's always seems to, the bleeding always seems to happen in the drying process. It's like a, um, it's like a, it almost looks like a chemical burn. It's not like a, a bleed like you'd see in like watercolour or anything like that. It's just sort of this really odd, faded, sort of like discoloration around the printed area. Which is hugely frustrating when you produce a batch of prints and then look at it and, and that happens. Especially after the printing is finished and it's in the drying process. Yeah, I've, uh, George, I've had a, uh, I've had enough of uh, having to wear masks in everyday life. If I, if I don't have to wear a mask while I'm working, then I'd much prefer that. Yeah, it could well be. It's it's hard to um, it's hard to really nail it down because there's so many different factors, and it only happens with that one pigment. And none of the Japanese prints seem to have that issue. So I got to do a bit more research and stuff because, especially because this print I'm carving here is predominantly yellow the entire background of the print is yellow it has mixed uh, oranges like pale um, pale oranges in it <coughs> things like that so it's going to be really important to get get that problem solved before I can even start work on printing this That's what, that's what it seems to do. Um, yeah, that's that's quite a good description of it, George. Is it seems there seems to be something in it that almost bypasses the sizing.
but in uh, in other Patreon related news, the books that I had uh, spoken about before <clears throat> that will be offered out to any one of you that is in the highest tier of subscription, the ones that are receiving prints every few months, um, will be me and my brother will be sitting down over the next couple of weeks and really nailing down the um, the design of the books and how they're going to all work and the layout and things. And for anyone that doesn't know or anyone that is new, um, once you have once your your first year's worth of or first four prints worth of um, Patreon subscription comes to an end, you will be offered a small book that can house the prints you purchased. Um, in addition to having a little bit more information on the prints and the designer, along with some technical notes from myself about the process of producing the images and a bit of background on the, on that. Um, they'll be offered out free of charge to anyone that has received the, the first four prints and th that theme will continue through the, the second Patreon series. Um, so it doesn't matter if you if you don't want the, the books or or whatever they'll be produced anyway because the the extra um, prints that I've produced once that series is finished will go on general sale however the prints won't be sold singularly as they're a, they're a full set they will be sold housed within the book Yeah, I could heavier size the print, uh, the the paper. The issue there is if the um oh the lights come on on my camera, how strange. Uh, sizing and the amount of size is sort of based on the weather. So if I'm using a lot heavier size and it's in the in the uh, colder months then it's not really very conductive to make really good clean prints with um, but that could be an option if as a last resort um, I, Nigel I use the exact same type of uh, the exact same brand of alum that Dave uses he he kindly gave me a, a almost a lifetime supply of it last time I was over there um, perhaps I should just ask Dave exactly what yellow he uses I don't want to keep bothering him about things like that though yeah the, yeah I I just I I used the the urine based one purely because um, I know that my partner has used it in her paintings and it was more of just a test rather than a serious consideration as to an alternative. But yeah, the books, yeah, the books, I'm excited for them. They're going to be all um, Japanese bound, all hand bound by my, by my brother. And hopefully if we can, uh, if time permits, he will be. We will have custom covers. We were originally thinking of just buying decorative Japanese paper to um, to bind the covers with. But the the two options we've sort of spoken about is one for him to do uh, custom Japanese dyeing. He has a, a small. Um, paper making Japanese paper making tray and a little kit and a, a load of pulp and stuff 
Um, so we could make up some paper and then he's got a little dyeing kit that uh, we can use to sort of custom dye patterns like sort of like tie dyeing but with paper or I will be doing a um, custom cover that will be a embossed image a traditional Japanese pattern um, like a repeating pattern that will be embossed into plain paper that will be bound onto the cover I quite like the sound of that but it's um, the time and I suppose the books aren't huge so the cover in itself wouldn't be huge but the concern is the time it would take to produce such a thing and we want to get these books out with the final print so you, your 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 final print of the series of the of the um the bird series will will come in the book yeah that's a great idea i i really want to i've sort of this this youtube channel is sort of just an archive of streams and I'd like to do more with it and uh, as the sort of the UK opens up more and I'm able to spend more time <coughs> with and around other people <coughs> haven't really been able to see my brother too much aside from sort of going on walks outside and things like that so as we're all getting vaccinated that's a, a, a definite consideration is to produce more more content because there's many things that we could the technical things that we could uh, we could film and shoot and it would be a great promotional tool for the uh, the additional 10 that will be made to go on to general sale the initial run will be ten. It's not. It's not going to be a, um, a specifically limited series. And the uh, the the books for the secondary ten won't. They won't feature some of the things that the Patreon books will. So it won't have my my technical notes and and things like that. Because I want to have. I don't want to devalue or or make the Patreon ones any less sort of special. <clears throat> my camera, oh my camera's frozen.
Hello, hello. Am I back? Face cam frozen. <clears throat> Hello, can everyone hear me okay? Are we back? Oh cool, we're back. Yeah, my um I think there's an update to my, my capture device, my my capture card, because it um it keeps free I need to check that. It wasn't just the <coughs> the camera that went the audio. I think well it showed that the audio had gone and also Technology. <laughs> um, so you guys that are Patreons, uh, which of you do have Facebook and use it fairly frequently? Um, because I, I don't really like posting the uh, the links to the streams on Patreon, it sort of clutters up the page and, and stuff like that. Um, but posting within the Facebook group, uh, in addition to Instagram, should be a lot better. Um, so are any, of you, uh, are any of you particularly opposed to me doing that, or would you like me to continue to post the uh, stream links in the uh, in Patreon posts? Well, that's interesting, George. Perhaps that, perhaps that was the uh, the issue. Oh, that's good if you're getting the notifications through. Yeah, I this is the first time in I don't know maybe six or seven years that I've that I've actually had a Facebook. Um, 
it just seemed like the most logical way to create a, a group. I don't even have a the profile I have was set up today with the sole purpose of, of creating said group with. But if you're if you're getting notifications through through YouTube and stuff fine then that's that's cool. Yeah, that's what I was. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Both of you, John and George. Yeah, I need. To, I feel like it's important to have coverage across all um, all social medias and things. But yeah, that's a great point, George. Being able to pin a, a schedule there. It's a shame you can't do that with um, Instagram and things. Eric, there is a regu re regular schedule. It's um, every Tuesday and Thursday, 7 p.m. UK time. Um, that will obviously, the, the, the days will not change, but the time will change this coming week. So um, there will be a uh, an hour's difference in the time. But... Um, The days will uh, will stay the same. So if you're if you if you're subscribed on YouTube with uh, with the little notification bell ticked, then uh, you should get notifications. And in addition, uh, Facebook and Instagram posts are always I always uh, post on my story on Instagram an hour before I uh, I stream. And will be the same with uh, with Facebook. But yeah, every Tuesday and Thursday, seven PM UK time. Yeah, I know. There's one for because um, Instagram and Facebook. Are, well, Facebook own Instagram now, don't they? So there's a. I think it's called Business Center or something like that, where it, where it, um, you can post across all. No probs. Does anyone else find the smaller things they carve, the closer, the closer you end up leaning your face in towards the block? Six weeks. 
I'll, I'll make a note of that. Thank you, George. Unfortunately, I don't really have anything to show for the end of the stream today, but by Thursday, um, I can show off the finished block set and actually will I? We'll see about Thursday actually. Um, I am scheduled to have my vaccination on Thursday afternoon. So, providing that it doesn't uh, kick my ass a bit, then I will be streaming. If, in fact, I'm one of the unfortunate few that get put down for a few days by it. I will notify you all, but the plan is to stream. Both my parents had their uh, their vaccine the other day, and my my dad was he was rather ill afterwards with it. Yeah, I agree. I agree entirely, George. It'd be it'd be far more efficient to um, to control that all through through an app. Oh, that's great, George. Do you, which, do you know which one you've uh, which one you've had? I would assume I'm getting the AstraZeneca one. Yeah, I've got my first on. Oh, I'm doing five by. My first on Thursday. Second is on the fifteenth. Fifteenth of June. Why do you get the the really cold one? Yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. It should all go well. I just I know I'm just uh, I've got making a contingency contingency plan for it to knock me to six for a bit, but I'm sure it will be fine.
Yeah, I think that's right, George. It, it should be fine. But I will let you guys know regardless. Right, there we go. That's a good hour's work. Another uh, another couple of streams, and we should be there. Um, so, everything permitting, Thursday we will be streaming. Uh, we'll be continuing with this section, getting as close as we can to finishing it off. And um, hopefully showing off a nice finished block set for the Patreon print um, for I will quickly post the link to the Facebook group in the chat So this is the link to the Facebook group. If any of you would like to join, then please do it. It would be greatly appreciated. And we can get started on sharing some information, sharing our prints with each other, sharing some resources and informational materials and processes, things like that. Um, yeah, thank you everyone for tuning in and joining um, and I will see you all Thursday evening same time uh, take care everyone have a good week stay safe thank you